So, welcome ulit sa ating Jew Business Tips and Lessons. Yung ating Jew Bay Learning ngayon ay isang request ng isang former participant natin sa training. At yung kanyang request na topic ay yung posting entries from general journal or special journals to the general ledger. So, before I discuss with you the actual posting process, unahin muna natin i-define what posting is. So, what is posting? Posting is the process of transferring the information from your journal to the ledger. Now, so previous lessons natin, I, did, I have shown you the different journals, the general journal and the special journals. Itong mga journals na to, ang tinatawag natin book of original entry. Dahil first time natin i-record ang mga transactions dyan. Now, the ledger is the book of final entry. Dahil dito nyo naman, huli i-record yung mga transactions. Of course, hindi pa tapos yung accounting process dyan. But then, yung posting process is the last book where you will record the accounting data. Okay. Ano ba yung ledger? Ano yung tura nito? Itong ledger kasi is the collection of all your accounts sa company. Ngayon, mas ma-appreciate nyo to kapag ka nagpunan tayo sa posting process kasi medyo uh, big kung sinabi mo na collections of accounts. Ngayon, punta na tayo sa posting process. Of course, transferring from your journal, journal to the ledger. So, yung ating mga previous discussions on how to record sa journals, gagamitin natin yan and then ipopost natin sila isa-isa sa general ledger. So, start na tayo. Let's start with the cash receipts books. So, cash receipts books is a special journal that shows all your collections ng cash. So, lahat ng transactions involving cash collections naka-record sa cash receipts. So, at the end of the month, ito total nyo lahat ng mga columns. So, posting becomes like a monthly thing. Yung total ng amount nyo sa cash receipts books, that is your total cash received. So, that's your debit to cash. So, nilagyan ko sa ilalim ng mga totals kung debit siya or credit. Uh, I suggest uh, masterin nyo rin ang debit and credit pagdating sa recording. I know yung mga, yung mga ibang bookkeepers uh, walang accounting background, pero hindi yun dapat dahilan para hindi nyo matutunan ng debit and credit. Maraming nalilito, but I could help you learn it Maybe sa mga succeeding topics natin, pwede ko yung i-discuss. But I also have an e-book discussing debit and credit and how to master it. I'm going to offer it sa inyo. Message nyo na ako if you really are interested. Okay, let's proceed. Yung amount nyo is your debit, i-propose nyo yan sa ledger nyo. So you should have a ledger for cash. So bawat account title nyo sa company, sa chart of account nyo, dapat meron kayong isang ledger. So, ito yung itsura ng ledger. Ito yung standard ledger. May iba may separate format. They come up with their own. Pero, let's use the standard ledger kasi ito yung available sa mga bookstores. Ito yung pinapatataka sa BIR. Okay? The left side is the debit side. The right side is the credit side. So, yun yung mga headings ng ledger nyo. Ipopost nyo ngayon yung total cash nyo sa debit. So, you would see the entire amount, magkano yung debit nyo sa cash, 26,670 ni record nyo sa debit side. And of course, yung sumunod naman, accounts receivable, that's credit. Lalagay nyo naman siya sa credit side na accounts receivable. May, may mga binilugan ako dyan, yung inyong reference, yung page ng journal nyo, yun ang ilalagay nyo sa general ledger. F column, meaning folder is the reference, the posting reference. So, magkakaroon ng sulat yan pag nag-post na kayo. So, CRJ1 is the page of your journal. So, page 1. Siyempre, pag nasa page 2 na kayo yung journal, it becomes CRJ2. Ngayon, papakita nyo naman sa journal nyo na posted na rin yung column na yun by writing below, yung nakadilog sa ilalim ng amount, the account number. So, kung wala kayo account number, pwede rin naman kasi Pwede checkan nyo lang yon, showing that you have posted the column. Okay, tuloy natin. Same special journal. So, meron di kayong column after accounts receivable, yung sales. 
na mention ko to sa previous um, lesson na mayroon tayong special account na gagamitin. We're not going to use sales, we're not going to use cash, but we're going to use cash sales. So, dyan yung ilalagay yung credit nyong cash sales or sales sa cash receipts books. Okay? So, makikita nyo, nakakredit siya. Same process dun sa mga posting reference. Ilalagay nyo yung page number and then you write the, the account number sa baba ng column. Then, ang ating amount na 14.2 is there. Makikita nyo naman sa cash as a sales journal. Okay, proceed tayo sa sales journal. This is your sales journal. Unahin natin yung debit part. So, do sa last two columns, meron kayo doon cash at saka account in sa terms. So, yung cash nyo dyan is debit to cash sales. Huwag so, yung i-debit sa cash. Sa cash sales. Kasi yung debit nyo sa cash, kung na-record nyo na yan sa cash receipts, ando na yun. Okay? Ito yung sinasabi kong nag-zero out. It's like a clearance account. So, i-debit nyo sa cash sales. Remember kanina, meron kayong credit. Same amount dapat. Dahil whatever you have recorded here, naka-record din siya sa cash receipts books nyo. So, dapat mag-zero sila, magbabalanse yan. Makita nyo that your debit of 14.2 is the is also your credit. And so, pag kinuha nyo balansa niyan, zero sila. Okay? Tuloy natin yung susunod na i-record natin or i-compose. Yung accounts, ibig sabihin yan, mga sales nyo yan, on account. Pag sales on account, it's a credit, a debit to accounts receivable. So, compose nyo. Debit nyo naman si accounts receivable for the entire total known column. Tuloy tayo ulit. Sales journal pa rin. So, yung sales nyo dyan, tatlong columns yan. Okay? Ang una, yung exempted sales. Siniwalay-hiwalay ko pa rin ang posting. Post nyo siya, debit. Uh, credit to sales. So, again, it's sales journal, page 1. Okay? Susunod na column ng sales is your taxable. Talagay nyo rin. Another line na lang. And then, yun namang zero rated, talagay nyo rin. So, tatlong entries tayo sa sales. And then, yung ating VAT output credit then Makita nyo, it's 2,760. Let's proceed. So, it's basically simple. Lipat lang. Kung ano yung amount, yun lang. You just need to be very careful na pag debit siya sa debit niya, post pag credit sa credit side, dahil pag nagkamali ng posting, magkakamali ng balanse. Pag nagkamali ng balanse, mali ang financial statements. That's what accounting is. That's how accounting is. Pagkamali sa simula, hanggang dulo ang dadala yung pagkakamali. So, kailangan ng maingat na pagre-record. Tuloy tayo. Sa purchases journal naman, yun yung isunod natin. So, yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng what to post, depende yan kung gusto unahin si cash disbursements, pwede rin si purchases journal. O anong gusto nyo unahin, pwede kahit ano. So, let's take purchases journal. Propose yung una is purchases of goods. Okay? Dalawa din yan. Meron ding VAT at saka non-VAT. So, inuna natin yung 20,000 na may VAT and then yung non-VAT. Okay. Pag na-post nyo si purchases, isunod nyo si VAT input. Debit. Sabi ko nga, ingat sa pag-propose kung debit, debit. So, naka-debit si VAT input. 36. And then, so, tuloy natin, yung expenses nyo, yung mga sa names of accounts nyo, dapat individual uh, ledger nila yan. Hindi pwede pagsama sa mga in one account. Siyempre, you classify expenses isa-isa. So, sa utilities expense, ipopost nyo kay utilities expense debit. Take note, it's purchase journal page 1. Makikita nyo ngayon under folio column. Ito yung 5 O4 dyan. Sa folio column, sa so tapat ng utilities expense. Yun yung account number ni utilities expense. And then, si repairs and maintenance, ganun din. Account number niya is 506. So, you write under folio column 506. And again, parehong debit yan. Okay? Continue natin. Ang susunod nyo naman, para tong cash sales, ha? Clearance account din. Makikita nyo sa... Sa column ng terms, may cash and on account. So, 
hindi nyo yan ipopost sa cash account, kundi sa cash purchases. So, it's a, a credit to cash purchases. Hindi credit sa cash. So, yan yung 11-2. And then, yung on account, i-record nyo as credit to accounts payable. Okay? So, pag na-record nyo na yan, tuloy natin. Pagdating dun sa cash disbursements, i-record na natin, no? Pansin nyo kanina may cash purchases kayo, alright? So, record natin naman si cash disbursements. Si cash disbursements palabas yung pera, kaya sa credit side yung amount. And then, yung mga ibang nasa right side mostly are debits except for withholding tax payable. So, yung cash purchases nyo, the debit nyo, hindi purchases. So, makikita nyo yung kaninang credit nyo 11-2, magsi-zero out din. So, may credit yung 11-2, may debit yung 11-2. Pag kinuha nyo balance nyan, zero. So, siya yung magiging clearance account nyo. Wala nga yung magiging double recording. So, there you go. Um, that's basically the, the entire process of posting. Yung mga ibang accounts, same process lang din. So, once everything is posted, of course, yung next step nyo is determine, determining the balance. And normally, pang isang taon ang ginagawa natin, di ba? At the end of the year, kung calendar year kayo, let's say December 31, kukunin nyo yung mga balances, then you can come up with your trial balance. You know what I'm talking about if you have basic accounting knowledge or basic bookkeeping knowledge. So, sabi ko nga, very important when you do bookkeeping, hindi lang yung how to fill out the books of accounts, but at least the mastery of debits and credits. I hope I can still help you sa mga lessons na to. So, message lang for topics that you want to be discussed and solo create the video. Thank you again.